Good morning, guys. Today's lesson is about a really big sea friend, the whale. But first, let's do our memory verse. Again, just like last week, if you can come up to me at the church and tell me the verse, you will get a prize. So let's get started. Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that is Romans 8.39. So if you go to a zoo or an aquarium, you may see hundreds of different kinds of animals. Most of the animals you see, however, are going to be smaller. You're going to see frogs and snakes and fish and turtles and toads or rodents, small creatures that live in enclosures. A reptile house, an aquarium, or a birdhouse alone could, could house literally hundreds of different kinds of species under one roof. But let's face it, we don't go to zoos and aquariums to see the little stuff. We go to see the big stuff. At the zoo, we want to see the elephants, the rhinos, the giraffes, hippos, and the big cats. At the aquarium, we want to see dolphins and sharks and stingrays and other giant creatures. The difference between zoos and aquariums are zoos can house the biggest creatures on land, but an aquarium can only house animals so big. There are huge creatures living in the oceans that because of their size could never be in captivity. The biggest creature still living is the blue whale. The blue whale can grow up to 98 feet long and weigh as much as 200 tons. Guys, that's like as long as the church. And that's 400,000 pounds. These amazing creatures feed off of some of the smallest creatures in the sea, plankton. There's no way we could ever build an aquarium large enough to contain the mighty blue whale. It needs the wide open spaces of the ocean to survive. It is completely wild and untamed. It is a beautiful picture of just how big and amazing our God is. The Bible is filled with stories that tell us how big God is. God created the whole world. He made every animal on earth big and small. Our fossil records tell us he made even bigger creatures than the blue whale. But some of the biggest things God has done, ever done are the miracles he performed for people who love him. One such miracle happens in today's scripture. The children of Israel were finally free of slavery from their Egyptian captors when they came upon the Red Sea. They turned back and saw the Egyptians, Egyptians were chasing them. They were trapped. But then God did something big to save his people from Egypt forever. So let's watch this video about today's scripture in Exodus. And at the end of the lesson, we will have a song to go with our story. Stories of the Bible, Moses and the Exodus. This is Moses who was an Israelite born in Egypt in a time when Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Wait, huh? Moses, however, grew up in the palace of the Pharaoh, the very man who was enslaving the Israelite people. When Moses grew up, he made a big mistake. Uh -oh. So Moses ran away from Egypt uh -oh. to the land of Midian. Uh -oh. After many years, an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses ah! and told him to go back to Egypt to free the Israelites. After much protesting, God granted Moses his brother Aaron to speak on his behalf. Ooh. So Moses went to Egypt. Damn, and on his way there, he met Aaron who was ready to do whatever God wanted him to do. The Israelites were slaves to the Egyptians, but God had a special plan for Moses. After rallying God's people to them, 
Moses and Aaron went to the Pharaoh. Ahem. And said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, has said. Let my people go. And Pharaoh made the Israelites work harder because of this. Hey, how are you? Uh. Huh? The foremen of the Israelite slaves were angry with Moses and Aaron for causing this trouble. Uh. Huh? Uh. So Moses cried out to God and asked why this was happening. But God said, you will see what I will do. I am the Lord. I will deliver you from slavery. Wow, okay. Hey! Moses told this to the people. Hey, hey. But they were so discouraged that they didn't listen to him. God told Moses to go to Pharaoh and to do exactly as he said. So Moses and Aaron went to the Pharaoh. Hey! Ah. God told them to take the staff and throw it down before Pharaoh. Huh? Pharaoh was not impressed. <laughs> he called his wise men and sorcerers, and they did the same thing. Ooga, ooga. <laughs> <laughs> but Aaron's staff swallowed up the sorcerer's staff. Uh. Yet Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to them. Shoo, shoo. Just as God had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to the banks of the Nile River and meet Pharaoh. Hey, Pharaoh! Oh, Moses and Aaron did just as God had said. Oh. But again, Pharaoh's magicians Ooga, did the same miracle, Ta-da. and Pharaoh refused to let God's people go. <laughs> So God sent nine more plagues to Egypt to show his power. Even with all the suffering, Pharaoh's heart stayed hard and he would not let the people go. On the night of the last plague, Pharaoh woke up and heard a great cry in Egypt. Oh, no. For there was not a house in Egypt where someone was not dead. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and told him to be gone with the Israelites. So the Israelites left Egypt immediately and made their way to the promised land, taking with them many riches from Egypt. And they took Joseph's bones as they had promised him many years before. But after they had gone, Pharaoh changed his mind and readied his army to take back the Israelites. When the Israelites saw Pharaoh and his armies come, they were terrified. But God made a way for them. Through all of this, the Israelites saw the great power of their God, the one true God, and they put their trust in Moses, his servant. So God had already performed a series of miracles to convince Pharaoh to let the Israelites leave his kingdom. But God knew he was stubborn and the ten plagues would not be enough to save his people. God saved his most amazing miracle for the last when he parted the Red Sea to save Israel and then to send the waves crashing down on their enemies. God is a big God. He is powerful and holds dominion over all creation. He was even big enough to send his only son to be our savior. God can do big things through us as well. But before we can see miracles, we have to place our trust in Jesus. Some people ask, if God could do all those miracles in the Bible, how come he doesn't do them now? Why don't we see fire falling from the sky or waters parting for people to cross over today? We may not be seeing him doing the dramatic miracles he did in the Bible, but he is still doing miracles. Most of these miracles take place in the lives of individual people. 
He allows parents and kids to forgive one another and to fix their differences. He heals broken hearts and broken friendships. He brings hope to the hopeless, and he uses people like you and me to do miracles for people in need. Why did God give us the big blue whale and other big signs in creation? He wanted to show us that yes, he is real. Yes, he is big. And yes, he still does perform miracles. God can do big things through anyone who believes. It doesn't matter if you're young or old, big or small, just as the tiny plankton can give us can give the nourishment to the mighty blue whale, we can be the spark that causes a big miracle to happen. God is a big God, and God is still doing big things. If you trust God, obey his teachings, and ask him to use you, he will do miracles through your life just as he did Moses. So God, we praise you for how great and wonderful you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Sammy.